Aloha, I'm Brandon Lester, your guest host for Security Matters Hawaii. I'd like to thank Mr. Andrew Lanning for letting us step in and uh, take over an episode while he's out of town. Today's show is all about upcoming cybersecurity events in the Hawaii area. So I have two great guest hosts. I'm excited to hear all about what they have to say. So uh, I'm excited to have some fun. Uh, I have with me Reynold Hioki. He is the uh, Hawaii State Cybersecurity Coordinator, and Bob Monroe from Hacker High School and the Institute for uh, Security and Open Methodologies. Welcome, guys. Thanks for joining. Thanks for having us there, Brandon. Yeah, we appreciate you uh, hosting us here. Absolutely. So for today, uh, I want to go over all the different great cybersecurity events we have going on. Uh, I know between all the organizations that are interested in cybersecurity, helping community, and really taking an opportunity to lay things out for students, uh, college graduates, and even all the way through uh, adults and, and the elderly. We have a lot of programs available to us, but today we're here to talk about a couple specific ones. Um, Ronald, why don't you kick it off? Uh, okay. I think we have a slide, and we're going to talk a little bit about the U.S. Cyber Challenge, correct? Yes, it is. So real quick, uh, a lot of these things we're talking about here are kind of emerging. Uh, uh, Bob has one that's been done before, but the first two are for the first time this, this year. So the first one I want to talk about is the U.S. Cyber Challenge, if we can get the first slide up here shortly. So the U.S. Cyber Challenge is really a program that is, is in two phases. And the first phase really is a quiz, and they call it the CyberQuest. It's a challenge. Uh, it's web-based. It's free. And the, the key thing today is it has to be done by this uh, Sunday coming up, April 14th. So why CyberQuest? Specifically, uh, CyberQuest is the, uh, the program that you're trying to qualify uh, for a cyber camp. So really, CyberQuest is just the initial part. Cyber camp is really what you want to go to, and cyber camp is going to be a summer uh, cybersecurity class that's going to go from 12 to 16 uh, August. And uh, the, the catch to this is it's taught by SANS Institute Professionals. Okay. And for those that in the know, uh, SANS Institute is probably uh, just an opinion, but probably the best cybersecurity professional education, training, research organization internationally in the world. Yeah, so well, those in the know kind of will probably agree with me, although uh, they're not the biggest name out there from a uh, certification level, but those that are certified really know what they're doing. So that's, I've that's always heard great things about the SANS Institute. Yeah. And again, it's free. So uh, again, uh, two steps. First, sign up for the uh, CyberQuest, and then uh, do the, do the quiz, and hopefully if you do good in this quiz, you will be invited to Cyber Camp. Wonderful. So I see on, uh, on the flyer we've got this first registration. Uh, quick reminder, that's got to be completed. Registration and completing the CyberQuest by this Sunday, April. And uh, for those that qualify, then they'll be invited to the Cyber Camp later in August. Um, yep. I'll jump in real quickly okay. as an AFSIA Hawaii member and advocate. Uh, I know this specific event is being put on for the first time in Hawaii, correct? Correct. And uh, we're doing it as a kind of a community approach. We've got folks from AFSIA, ISC Squared, and really a, a goal to make this as available to as many people as possible. Yes, indeed. Yep. Okay. So I just wanted to throw something out. Uh, if you can go back to the slide again, sorry. Uh, in addition to the, uh, the cyber camp, which is going to be occurring in, uh, in August, uh, this event's going to be surrounded with other events. For example, we'll have a, a job fair, uh, an award ceremony. But within the camp, there's also a capture the flag competition. So that's also a kind of cool thing for cybersecurity professionals or those that are just coming into the, uh, into the business. Uh, last comment to this, if you, if you go to the website, uh, you will not see the camp. Uh, specifically. Uh, it's not there yet, uh, but it will be uh, popping up as a camp here in Hawaii shortly. So if you, if you don't know that, you might think you might have to go to another state on the mainland, but no, you're gonna, we're going to have it here in Hawaii. Okay, great. And uh, one last time as a reminder, make sure anyone interested in participating goes out, registers, and completes that quiz by this Sunday uh, about 9 p.m. Hawaii time. So Bob, how are things with you? Very busy, very exciting, a lot of stuff going on. Okay. Uh, we, uh, from Hacker High School uh, perspective, we've got uh, our week-long summer course coming up in June, June 3rd through uh, June 7th. That'll be 
out of Milani High School. Um, it's open uh, for all cybersecurity students that have been um, high school students that have been uh, recommended by their Cyber Patriot coach, their mentor, or their cybersecurity teacher. Um, it's free. We provide the textbooks uh, thanks to Cyber Hui, um, and we'll have a pizza party at the end. The Hacker High School 2.0 course that we're actually teaching in June is the most advanced cybersecurity course ever taught to teens in the world, except for what they have going on in Israel with Unit 800. Wow. That's more of a military course. Um, then following that, we'll be doing another uh, Hacker High School course ambassador program at Leilohua, and that will be the following week in June. And on top of that, we've got, let's see here, we, we're working on Hacker in a Box, Digital Crime Scene in a Box. Um, IBM has asked us to work on another project with them. And then uh, Microsoft is also asking us about uh, doing a diversity program with them, focusing on teaching women and minorities about the careers of cybersecurity and how to get them into the field of cybersecurity. Wow, that's great. And then we're also teaching NATO and a bunch of other stuff. Um, so yeah, <laughs> we've got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, I mean, it's textbooks. Uh, I see you have some gear with you here today. That is not a small lift. You put up, probably put a lot of work into these classes and then going out and teaching and getting students involved. Yeah, um, each class is uh, different. Um, for example, I've been teaching uh, Hacker High School at Milani High School every other Friday for their cybersecurity class. Okay. And uh, that's been really, it's been really, really rewarding for me to see the students go from uh, the crawl, walk, run phase and just explode in the amount of knowledge that these kids are picking up. They are very inventive, they're very curious, they've got lots of initiative. Mm -hmm. For example, the, the other day we were talking about deception tools, and I showed them canary tokens. Okay. And I said, okay, what else can we do with these canary tokens? Yeah, you, they can be notifications and whatnot, and you can set them up for honey pots and honey nuts and things like that. What else can we do with them? So then we got into offensive security and things like that. And the students came up with some pretty brilliant ideas on how to use those tokens. And they're free, the canary tokens are free. Okay. Yeah, talk a little bit about those canary tokens. What is, uh, what's deception for folks that don't know? What does a canary token do for you in that world of deception? Canary tokens are designed um, to, uh, they're basically triggered. So let's say you build a website uh, or you set up a server, and on that server you have got, you put a file in there called logins. And of course, some uh, malicious uh, criminal breaks into there and they come across a file called logins. They'll take that, file, and as soon as they go to take it or they open it, uh, the Canary token will send a message back to you telling you that somebody's opened it and they're at this, this address, this IP address. They'll, work, they'll do everything from documents to spreadsheets, um, URLs. You can put fake URLs hidden in there. You can do, there's a bazillion different things you can do with these tokens that are just absolutely amazing from a deception standpoint. It's basically taking a honeypot and expanding it to where you can, uh, if you want to go so far as to actually set up a payload. Let's say I want to set up a beacon. The NSA was very good at doing this, where they would have files, download the file, hey, a beacon goes off. Okay. So we can actually track where that document is going, what channels it's going through, uh, if they're using tour routers or things like that, we can still find the, the location of okay. where it's going to go. Kind of like that treasure map, finding where things are happening. Maybe they shouldn't be happening there, and now you know. Yes. Great. Exactly. So in, the, in this world of cybersecurity, deception is a pretty advanced technology. It's, it's really exciting to see that in the, in the hands of high schoolers now, right? Yep. Uh, getting them to learn what's possible as early as possible. Mm -hmm. And the other, the other part about it is with Hacker High School, we teach... Um, protection. First and foremost, security, our definition of security is separating an asset from a threat. Uh, you know, you ask 100 security professionals, what is their definition of security? You're going to get 100 different answers. For us, security is nothing more than separating an asset from a threat. Like, let's say, Reynolds and my bodyguard. Mm -hmm. I'm the asset, and he is to protect yes. me from you, I'm, the threat, if sure. you were the threat. Okay. So that is security right there. Yep. 
So what we teach in Hacker High School is how to uh, protect an asset from threats out there. We don't focus on vulnerabilities because they change all the time and there's always a million of them. Mm -hmm. But if you focus on, focus on just the asset and defending and protecting that asset, you have a much greater chance of having a secure environment. Makes great sense. Yeah, all what used to be just make sure all your things are patched has changed quite a bit now. Oh yeah, I mean even authentication. Authentication doesn't work. We know it doesn't work. Right. You know, passwords and logins, uh, those are horrible, right. horrible right. way. Where else have we uh, stuck with 50-year-old technology going from username, password, and okay, we're, we're still using username, password, right? Mm -hmm. So what we're looking at is intent. Uh, what are the properties of intent? Yeah, you might be an authorized user, but what you're doing on my network may not be good. Mm -hmm. So we want the computer to identify the intent. What is the intent of the user? Maybe you're on vacation, somebody logs into your site pretending to be you, spoofs you, or gets access to your account, mm -hmm. but is now downloading or moving material that you wouldn't normally do. The intent <laughs> of that user right. now. Right. So authentication mm, kind of goes away then. Yes. Yeah. Now the other thing about deception tools is, which gets very, very interesting, we have honey pots and honey nets and things like that. Mm -hmm. Now what happens when we introduce artificial intelligence Two honey pots and honey nets. Right. It's IBM Watson. That is an artificial intelligence. And that also runs honey pot, honey net. That is part of his services. So now you've got an artificial intelligence that can repair itself, can defend itself, it can think for itself, mm -hmm. and it can pretty much protect whatever it is designed to protect. So that's the, like the coolest thing yeah. in the world when you start breaking that down. That's great. So I, I'm a cybersecurity professional. When, when do I lose my job to that AI? When, when are they going to show up and, and I don't need to, to work on the, on the servers anymore? Well, according to Department of Labor and Statistics, nothing is going to change for the next 30 years. Okay. We will continue to have a deficit of jobs, or, or excuse me, a shortage of skilled labor force. And that's also where Hacker High School comes in. Because our goal is to train teens on how to become cybersecurity professionals. Cybersecurity is one of the few fields technical fields that you don't need a college degree to get into. You just need to know what you're doing. Now, I got nine-year-olds that are running Bash Script. I mean, I got kids that are doing some, some amazing things yeah. on these computers, yeah. and if we direct them in the, in the right location, say, look, you can start a career making good money, um, you're gonna learn a lot, you're gonna have a great time doing it, but I have yet to meet a cybersecurity professional that doesn't just love what they're doing. Right. So we start getting teens involved, um, get them to help to teach other teens through our ambassador program. Mm -hmm. And the other uh, issue we have is the teachers, a lot of teachers are not comfortable with teaching cybersecurity. So what we do is we'll, we'll train our ambassadors up or other high school students who've already gone through Hacker High School. We say, okay, now you go back to your community, you go back to your teachers, and you help them. When it comes to a subject or a topic, and the teacher doesn't know it very well, now you step in and you apply the information from Hacker High School textbooks, the information you have, and you help out. You set up your clubs, you set up um, meetings to help out your fellow students, you become a mentor. Because the cybersecurity community, I can't get other, we can't seem to get other professionals out there to understand that they need to mentor. Sure. They, they want the government to grow cybersecurity professionals and the government wants the industry to grow their own. Right, and so, there's, there's no magic solution there, right? Except for Hacker High School. Okay, well that's great. Well, we're gonna take a quick break in just a, a few seconds here, and then we'll come back, talk a little bit more about some of the other uh, events happening in Hawaii, Cyber Patriot, and how all these things can kind of come together so we can build that workforce. Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on ThinkTech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, 
and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Welcome back to Security Matters Hawaii. I'm Brandon Lester, your guest host, and we've got Reynold Hioki and Bob Monroe joining us today. We're here talking about uh, a lot of the cybersecurity events, initiatives, uh, many, many things going on here in Hawaii that are all really good, helping uh, students and up really learn how to engage in the cybersecurity world and what we need as a community. Uh, Reynold, I was just thinking about Hacker High School and how that's a great classroom environment. Are there any other initiatives that we have that really get into high schools and get folks interested. Yeah, sure thing, Brandon. So uh, the Hacker High is a, is a really good program because it's actually curriculum. There's actually a textbook uh, and there's instruction. Uh, but a lot of the other areas are uh, specifically what we're talking about is Cyber Patriot. Cyber Patriot by def definitely is not a class. It, right. is a, it is a sport. It is it's probably the <laughs> national cybersecurity sport for our middle school and high school students. Okay. So uh, there, there is instruction, but it's, it's about competition. So a uh, little different, but they all, they all come together. They're all kind of doing the same thing. Sure. So uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I was going to ask, who, who owns that program? Because it's, it's a national program, correct? So, so uh, Cyber Patriot is a national program. It's actually pushed out by the Air Force Association out in uh, Arlington, Virginia. Uh, I, I've had the honor to meet the national commissioner. Uh, retired Brigadier General Bernard Scott, who I actually worked for uh, as a guardsman when he was here at, uh, at Hickam Air Force Base, commanding okay. the communication uh, part of uh, PACOM. So a good guy. He's actually come out and been our guest speaker a couple years ago at our recognition ceremony. So, wow. uh, that was, that was a, a big hit for us. Uh, we actually then had a, a social mixer in his honor. About 100 of our Cyber Patriot community showed up. Wow. So that was a kind of cool thing. Uh, so Cyber Patriot is the uh, national cybersecurity, I call it the national cybersecurity support for middle and high school. And basically, uh, for last year, I'll use that season, uh, nationally there was over 6,500 teams that participated. Hawaii had about 100 plus from about 50 different middle and high schools. So Hawaii is, uh, is getting big in this and they're getting bigger every year. Uh, two years ago, we had only about 52 teams, 54 teams. So over the last couple of years, we have doubled. Wow. And I think that we'll probably have another increase after uh, this summer, uh, which is a program called Cyber Camps, which preps the kids for Cyber Patriot during the school year. Okay. So that's, that's all, everything about Cyber Patriot. Uh, real quick, it talks, it teaches basically to run platforms to include Windows, uh, Ubuntu, Linux, and uh, basic networking. Wonderful. All in, in virtual environments. Uh, okay. So people don't need to be walking around with their big clunky servers anymore. <laughs> Yep, they're coming off there a couple, a couple of laptops. Uh, usually it's about five uh, students on a team okay. uh, working on the weekends, uh, competing not, not against other people in the sense that they're not being attacked. Uh, they're just taking defensive measures, basically, so they're protecting their system. Okay. And they compete, basically, with uh, all the other teams that are protecting their system. So there is no interaction. Uh, okay. It is all defensive. And defensive is really the foundation where people need to start to understand. Definitely. If you understand defensive, then you, you start learning about offensive, but uh, this, this, this program is a defensive program. Okay. I mentioned that. I'm not sure if I mentioned it. It is a defensive <laughs> sure. program. Sure. No, that's, that's fair. Uh, are there any events coming up? Yeah, so uh, many schools have been doing uh, Cyber Patriot for the last, since the beginning when it started about 10 years ago. And we as a, a community uh, have always talked about bringing the teams together. And uh, let me just digress. So to compete, what happens is that teams go to their homerooms in their high schools or middle schools, uh, they, they turn their computers on, and they kind of close the door. So no one's going to, no one even knows they, they exist. And it's on the weekend, just the classes are closed. Uh, the only visitor they'll probably get is uh, if, they, if they order a pizza, is the pizza guy coming for delivery. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. They might have their coach or their mentor there, maybe, maybe not. But it's, it's a pretty closed kind of uh, competition. And so, uh, yeah, so the, 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 the students from one high school do not know the students from the other high school. And there is no kind of mixing of, of our, our teams. 
uh, which will probably be advantageous when they go to college, right. especially when they become professionals, because you know, in cybersecurity, it's all about sharing information, right? So if you know the people. Uh, so we want to start that early. And so this year, we're having what we're calling the Cyber Patriot Invitational. And what that is, is bringing all the uh, Cyber Patriot teams that want to come uh, under one roof and basically have an event, all focused around a capture the flag competition. Oh, wonderful. Okay. And the, the capture the flag is going to be um, a couple hours or a couple of days. How's that event kind of work? So we're kind of starting small this year. It's going to be a two day event. The first day is going to be the 23rd of August. And by the way, this is going to be at Sacred Hearts Academy. And uh, that is specifically targeted to the new teams, the new coaches, mentors, competitors, parents, uh, those associated with the schools that really never had a Cyber Patriot team before, but they're coming on board. So we're going to onboard them, uh, explain to them what. Cyber Patriot is all about as a coach, mentor, what your roles are. So we'll have a bunch of workshops. It's, it's really in the afternoon. It's not during the day, so after okay. school. Uh, and we'll also teach the, the new students about what, what Capture the Flag is. So we'll have individuals that actually played Cyber Patriot before uh, that will, will run these workshops for the kids. Because Saturday, the 24th, uh, we're going to have an opening ceremony, and then we're going to go right into the Capture the Flag. Uh, okay. And we, we really don't want the new students, you know, like what the heck, and just be completely discouraged and, and give up. It, it, it is, is, is a little hurdle to, to get over you know, in, a, in this type of event. Uh, but I think all of our kids will do very well. That's great. Uh, so that's the capture the flag event for, uh, for the invitation. So you take what would have been a, a bunch of teams that are all competing at a national level, and then for a couple of days bring them together, have one big cybersecurity community here in Hawaii, all the Cyber Patriot teams playing together. Yes, those that, of, of course, we can't force anybody, but I think a lot of the uh, teams will be coming in. I've okay. talked to a lot of the coaches and mentors. They're very excited about this program. Uh, but it's a great opportunity because, again, uh, one thing that's not quite being done is bring the community together, which means, you know, how do we as a community uh, do better? Uh, sure. So my thought is uh, a lot of these coaches and mentors would love to help the, the ones that are not as advanced. And you know, give them this, their, uh, their tools they have or their, their tech, you know, their, their, what they do. Uh, so you know, would I help? Of course, they would help an, a fellow team, uh, but they may not, they may not uh, share the, the secret sauce right. uh, that they have uh, developed over the years. Right. So uh, collectively, this will, our hope is it'll bring Cyber Patriot as a sport in the state uh, at the next level for all the, uh, all the participants. I think, as you mentioned earlier, uh, cybersecurity really is kind of this, this team approach um, at a defense level. Uh, work for a company, you want to keep your network safe, yep. right? Uh, there's us, the good guys, and then some bad guys out there trying to get in. Maybe they're bad, maybe they're just seeing what's going on, but it gives everyone the opportunity to see how you work together as a team. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, oh, did we put the slide up? Let's go ahead and put the slide up. Do we have a, a Cyber Patriot invitational yes. slide? So I had a couple of things I wanted to mention, right? So there it is, Cyber Patriot Invitational, August 23rd, 24th, uh, Sacred Hearts Academy. This is relatively new. Uh, the committee that's running it just made that decision uh, on Sunday, <laughs> two days ago. We're working very hard. We, we think we're ahead of schedule. I, I think this will be a really good event. So uh, who's invited to the uh, Invitational? Really, if you're into Cyber uh, Patriot, you're into high school, uh, you, don't, you don't have to be a You can show up if you're in... Uh, Enthusiasts in cyber security, cyber patriot, or high school. Okay. So that's that's really key to that. And again, in addition to the capture the flag, we'll have workshops, uh, we'll have presentations, uh, we'll, we'll probably have uh, one or two cyber safety presentations okay. for those that uh, want to learn a little bit more how to protect themselves while they're online. So We're always welcoming mentors, right? Need and, more, yeah. as many folks involved as we can. We definitely will need mentors, so we're engaging with the community and others. Uh, uh, again, just like the uh, uh, U.S. Cyber Challenge, the two uh, sponsors of this is uh, AFSIA Hawaii, okay. uh, as well as ISC Squared Hawaii. So those are becoming the two organizations that are really, from a community perspective, specifically for our, you know, our kind of our K through 12 and the, the new professionals trying to make a difference here in the state. Wonderful. Well, I know um, we only have a few minutes left, and Bob brought some some toys to to check out here. Bob, what do you have? Well, uh, because we're a global nonprofit, we teach around the world. Uh, our lessons are translated into 12 different languages, so you can pick you know, whatever language you want, and they're always being translated into a new language. Uh, we have translators at 
good volunteer to uh, translate our material. In a lot of the countries uh, that we teach in, they don't have laptops and, and uh, servers and everything for the students. Some of the countries we teach in, they don't even have constant electricity. So uh, P. Herzog, our director, asked me a couple of years ago, how do we fix this? How do we uh, allow Hacker High School to be taught in these places that uh, have kind of more austere condition? I said, easy. We got these things called Raspberry Pis, which, uh, let's see, this one has gone to sleep on me. Wake up. For example, this Raspberry Pi over here, uh, this is running Kali Linux. Um, and the nice thing about Kali Linux is, is uh, it's a security platform. It's, you can do penetration testing, you can do security auditing, you can do digital forensics, um, you can do your homework on it, you can do all of our lessons, you can do all of our exercises on it. It's got internet capabilities through uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, as well as Ethernet. Um, and it can run off a of four pack of AA batteries for about 19 hours. Wow. <laughs> so for those countries that have a power issue, sure. Raspberry Pis work very well. And there's you know, quite a few other companies that make similar uh, products like that too. This uh, Raspberry Pi here uh, is the newest one and that is running Raspbian. Um, same thing, it's, uh, it doesn't have the security tools on it, uh, but I can switch it out by changing out the micro SD card on it. Oh, okay. You can run pretty much any operating system you can think of. I got one that's actually running Windows. Not a great idea, but it will run up Windows. Wow. Um, and these are very accessible and not, not very expensive, correct? No, not very expensive at all. Wonderful. So these are the tools that, that will enable the, the students and cybersecurity professionals of the future. Yes. Let's let them take these, go learn what they need to learn, and um, continue to grow. Mm -hmm. And they can use them to scan the area to find out if there's any uh, rogue access points or find out if there's radio frequencies that are being transmitted. Do that with a software defined radio, just plug it into the uh, USB port here. As you can see, there's four USB ports. Oh, yeah. When was the last time you saw a laptop with four <laughs> USB ports? Right, right, that's right. That's great. So it's very customizable. And that's the nice thing about it. Wow. Well, we, uh, we're wrapping up the show here, I think. So I want to thank both of you guys, Bob and Reynolds. I appreciate you coming on. Thank you for having us. Uh, I want to say thanks to, to Andrew for letting me guest host today. And um, we're at a point where I, I'm really excited about what's going on in the community. And um, thanks, everyone, because community security matters. <laughs>